You are listening to the You Got Jobbed podcast. This is episode three. You know, that's what editing is for, so when you push the button and then editing someone else because... talks, you don't want them to talk, you just go and edit that. I don't Unless know you're that... a lazy podcaster where yeah. you just leave it in and then it's kind of a funny sound bite at the beginning. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> I did start recording. I hate editing. I don't want to push extra buttons. This is Aaron Boston. He's the first interview I ever did, uh, and he's awesome, and it was in 2002, uh, I just looked it up this morning. Say hello, Aaron. Hey there. <laughs> okay, all of a sudden I was like, he's not even going to talk, this bastard. Uh, I started recording now. Don't get scared, though. So I'm going to, I'll just start talking then. All of a sudden you stopped, you've been talking. Usually about- it works best if you just start talking, yeah. Okay, I'm talking. I printed out your interview. I have it sitting right here. And uh, my so you were a janitor and this was in 2002 and uh people can read the interview if they want and i'm going to ask you some questions about the interview so um the thing that first thing i highlighted was uh, that you said the first vacuum you worked with you called it mod is that really true um it's not really true the reason why i told you that i called it mod was kind of an inside joke that you you may have not picked up on, but when we first started hanging out back in was about ninety six, um, um, yeah, or ninety seven, and we were working at that really crazy electronic company with all those crazy kids. I think it's out uh, of it doesn't exist anymore. Oh no, I would hope not. Um, yeah. Anyway, for for the benefit of everybody who would be working for that place. Um, and at some point, like we're at a part the holiday party or something, and we're talking about favorite movies. And and one of us was like, "Oh, have you ever seen Harold and Maude? And the other one's like, "Yeah, I love Harold and Maude. That's so awesome that 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 you've seen that movie." So I think that was the whole thing. Like we were the only two people in that whole group that had both seen that movie. So oh, do you know? I just was flipping channels the other day. I saw it and um, just a little bit of it. And those Cat Stevens songs. It's like so. Nice. But then you're yeah. like, wait, this is a love affair with an 80 year old lady and a <laughs> young kid. And then it's kind of like, oh, but then you're like, he's such a cool kid, though, because he keeps faking his death. Yeah. 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 That was a I, that was a cool movie. I saw it recently again, too. But now. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that was the reference because that was uh, we yeah. saw it together at some point. Did we? I uh, had the video, the VHS tape. So maybe yeah, just... maybe that's what it was. Did, so, um, um, did you ever it, name your... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, uh, well, I was going to say there's a more recent movie, actually, um, with uh, Bill Murray. Yeah. And uh, it's it's pretty good. He's like a rock and roll um, band manager that gets, like, stuck in Iraq. Yeah, this is... Yeah, is it the... Lots of Cat Stevens songs, though. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> it Was that movie good? I didn't see it. It was like... Tal- um, I just must remember the soundtrack. <laughs> and Bill Murray was in it, so it wasn't all that bad. Taliban mania. I can't remember what it was called. The the maybe he was like the like road. no. I think it was actually called Rock the Casbah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, that makes more sense. Than Taliban mania. Um. Rock so anyway, yeah, that was just that reference, and I don't, I don't, you know, when it it doesn't make a whole lot of real sense to like name something that's an inanimate object that only you interact with because it's not going to respond to the name because it's not a real living thing, and. The only reason to name anything is if there's someone else that you want to, like, use that name with, and then they know what you're talking about. So, for example, if Adam was running around the Garden of Eden without Eve, he wouldn't have had any reason to name anything because, like, he just looks at things and he knows what it is. There's no reason to, like, use language to describe anything to someone else and go, like, oh, you know that that thing around that that snakes around the uh, the tree – and then Eve's like, oh, yeah, let's call that like a snake. You know, then then they have a name for something and then they can just say snake instead of trying to describe the whole thing. So, yeah, I just totally made that up. Did I was you- trying to be like clever. And that was like 2002. I was living in Portland. I thought it was a hipster. So it was clever. I thought it was clever. I, I thought you were telling the truth until just now. And now I'm really upset. Yeah. No, that's the <laughs> that's the whole thing. When you're interviewing, a, when you're interviewing a, a, a writer or a wannabe writer, you got to be aware that 
sometimes they lie for effect. It's not that it doesn't reveal a more hidden or deeper truth, but it's not always necessarily the literal truth. Didn't you name your car? You had a Subaru Brat. Yes. Did it have a name? Did we call it a name or no? No. It was just a um, brat. Didn't we call it Mod? No. Yeah. I think it was just the Brat, I guess. Never mind. I think we just called it the Brat. Yeah. And, my... yeah, and you don't remember driving over that cat that one time, huh? What? <laughs> I know we talked about this because there You're was that point where, up. no, there was that point when, when I took that one girl out and <laughs> you needed a ride from class and you had that friend that was in that like comedy writing class. I met some guy in the class and took him home with me. No, I, but we didn't take, I didn't take him to my home. We took him to his home, but he rode right. in the back he of was, the brat, right? In the tr- yeah. You guys were riding in the back of the brat because I had the little camper shell on it. Oh. And, uh, and then I had that girl in the, in the front passenger seat. No, that, you did not. The girl who scratched herself? Yes. Okay. We'll just won't say her name. Okay. So wait. So <laughs> that, what does this have to do? Did you and you hit a cat? Well, there was like a cat that ran across the road, and um, and it went underneath the car. Like I don't. I it may have not even been a cat. It may have been a possum or something. But like you were, you were in the back. But there was that little window that went between the back and the front. Yeah. And you had your face in that window, and you were just like jabbering away, like <laughs> like to do in those days. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and I was like mildly embarrassed and thinking that the date was probably not going to go anywhere with this girl anyway. So after I dropped the two of you off, I was just going to probably drop her off too. And then like something ran across the road and you're like, oh my God, you just ran over a cat. And, and I'm really? like, did you have um, that? I, I don't even, I, I don't even remember that part. I just remember saying something like, well, I, I took my foot off the gas, but it happened so fast. Like, I, you know, what was I going to slam on the brakes? Oh, wait, and then now I have so many about questions. It. You're like, oh, you took your foot off the gas. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have so many questions. First of yeah, all, that, that totally killed the, that, that was, yeah, that was like the one time I went out with that girl and the well, last that's time. That's what I was just going to say. Did anything <laughs> happen with her? So, no. It no, didn't. no, good. Because, yeah, you saved, you, you saved that from becoming a, 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 derailed relationship. <laughs> what did she think about you running over a cat? Uh, I don't remember her having a reaction at all. I she don't, was so self-absorbed. I yeah. I don't, I don't think she even like knew what was going on. She around. had a lot of scratching going on, right? I think she, <laughs> yeah. was, she was a real scratcher. Yeah. Well, I remember that there was that, that, that guy that rode the Harley that worked in the testing department, the Q and a, he was like, no, he was like the dr- the Q and a manager for that company. Yeah. And he made a comment about that because he would watch, he would sit in front of the big window oh God, yeah. and watch the girls walk across from the other building. Yeah. And you know, there was the one girl with the big boobs that he'd always make comments about. Oh. <laughs> and okay. then when that girl would walk up, he'd always be like, yeah, somebody has got to tell her that if you, if you let your, uh, I don't, I, we didn't what? establish if swearing or, or, you know, profanity is allowed on this or not. It's allowed. Okay. So his, his comment, I remember this distinctly was something like, yeah, she keeps sh- scratching herself. And cause somebody has got to tell her that, <laughs> that when you let your, your boyfriend fuck you in the ass, don't you got to make him wash before he fucks you in the front side too. Wait, wait, <laughs> is this who I think it is? Wait, who, can you just tell me what letter of the alphabet this person's name started with? I don't even remember his name. Oh. I just remember he, he rode a Harley and he had like handlebar mustache and he was always talking really loud. It, it wasn't Steve. With no. Him. Okay, because I'm like, he's a super nice, like feminist type. No, guy. no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, Steve was super nice. Oh, no, thank this God. Kind of the, I couldn't picture the jerky him. Guy. Oh, thank God. I, you no, see- he was the one that was, he like, I think he basically said inappropriate sexual things to every woman that worked at that place. Ew. All right, yeah. all right. Let's move on from that. Wait, so actually, <laughs> I wrote down so many things when you were talking. Do you do you have you heard that expression "purple nurple"? No. <laughs> you're like so. I had two older brothers, and I just remember hearing the expression "purple nurple," and I but I haven't heard it since I was like twelve, maybe. And then just yesterday or the day before at work, the we have all these. Um, I don't know. Let's just say we have these resources and you can give them names and you have your own key that you give it. And my key is just my name, you know, Suzanne.key or whatever. Well, this one guy, he had like 20 things and they were all called purple key or whatever. And I was like, what the, f- who is doing this purple nurple? It's such a silly thing. It's like Kool-Aid or something. And I looked it up and no, no, it's a titty twister. <laughs> it's like when someone takes your nipple and twists it. Anyway, are you still there? Is there? Wait, is there an actual thing where you 
you, you're not just like using a one of those clips that you put on a bag of chips to keep it from going stale. Ouch. Like, is there actually a device like you could walk into one of those no, one of those crazy just... stores in no. Seattle where it sells like vibrators and stuff okay. and you can buy purple notes? <laughs> this is going off the rails. My mother-in-law is going to listen to this. So <laughs> she's one of the five people who's going to listen to this. So let's just stop that where it started. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, okay. And then just one last thing to go back to that story is that why? Yeah, well, the, the everybody one... needs lube. Okay, stop. Jesus Christ. So, uh, editing, I, editing, Suzanne. I don't want to push extra buttons, but I do want to edit out the part where you told people that I took a comedy class because that was. Oh, so, really? Well, you because that was off limits. <laughs> it was at the community college. And yeah, it was. Only, I didn't mention that. I went to one class and the guy, the teacher made jokes about like potatoes or something and it wasn't funny. It was horrible. And I only went to one and that was the only time I ever thought that I could actually you know, I thought, let me see what stand-up comedians do. I didn't think I could actually be. I don't want people to think I am full of myself. Anyway, okay. No, but but not only I, I, I remember that because I was the one that encouraged you to take that class. Okay, good. So because you were you were hilarious in those days. You were always oh. so funny. You were, and that and it was like it was like none of the guys wanted to date you, but they all really loved hanging out with you because you were so oh, fuck those guys. That's not fair. Why didn't anyone want to date me? It didn't make any sense. Anyway, okay. Well, because well, you were competing with the blonde girl in sales yeah. that had the big boobs. Yeah, and everybody true. wanted to do her. Okay, so. okay. Don't remind me. I shared an office with a guy who was, yeah. Anyway. Okay, uh, the, the Steely Dan guy that, that, that always, always farted. Yes, yeah. and he would yeah. shut the door. So I was trapped in there with him <laughs> listening to Steely Dan and smelling his farts. It was a great time in my life. Uh, yeah. All right. So anyway, this place you worked in Portland. Um, yes. Do you think it's still there? It was a school for naturopathic medicine. Yeah, it actually was like it was like a building that was like 100 years old. And it was um, like originally a school for like, I don't know, Catholic orphans or something. I, I'm not entirely sure, but I I had the impression that it was a school for children at some point. Then like in the 60s, it was turned into like a community college and it was one of the one of the main community colleges um, for the area. And then I think like later in like the late eighties or early nineties, they built like a bigger campus, like farther away. Cause it was right down in downtown Portland. So it was kind of like valuable real estate. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was torn down because right across the highway um, along the riverfront was just like a bunch of crappy, like, you know, like the Kaiser Steelworks were down there and they just had like a lot of like like parking lots full of like rusted steel and old trucks and things like that and like tires piles of tires with tarps over them mm -hmm. and then they took that whole waterfront side right right about the time when I was when I left which was like you know what uh 10 10 11 years ago and they were actually building skyscrapers there it was going to be a bunch of condos so I know it's all condos there and that building's probably been turned into a a tower of condos. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe not. We should look up on Google. I'm, I I'm, that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. So 2002, that was 15 years ago, right? Almost yep. 15 years yep. ago. Oh, my God. I feel like I just interviewed you for this, like, recently. Well, what's funny is I worked there in, like, 1996. Well, yeah, it said I, you were there for five years. When I had this interview, you said I've been working there five years. Yeah, yeah, that was a lie too. I worked for that company for <laughs> five, but I only worked in that building for about 12 months. Well, still a year. That's that's legit. And um, how many? It says you listen to books on tape and you listen to War and Peace. And how many books on tape do you think you've listened to at this point in your life? Oh, at this point now? Yeah, more than I've read. Um, really? Paper. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because like at for the last for the last nine years, I've almost exclusively listened to books on tape, and it's so rare when I actually like read a book with pages. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and it's that job that ruined it for me too. I think. What but do you mean no, ruined it? Well, I mean meaning that I can't seem to concentrate and finish a book. It has normal pages because I, I have to listen to the audiobook and it has to be an audiobook with a narrator who's got a good 
swanky voice. <laughs> so what's what are some of your favorite audiobooks or books on tape? You um, to? Well, I like anything read by George Godal. Who's that? So, uh, he's sci-fi. Just, he, no, no, no. He's a reader. He's a reader. I don't care about the, oh. I don't care about the author. I'm talking about the guys that read it. Yeah. Oh my God! You yeah, know the re- names of the guys who read it. Isn't it usually the author who reads it? No. No, no, no. Because man, when you listen, to, yeah, you haven't listened to enough audiobooks. But when no. they have the author read it, it sounds terrible. Like, <laughs> like I don't know if you've ever heard a like interview with Stephen King. But like when he reads his own stuff, like he's got some practice and he's not too bad. Mm-hmm. But you're just like, oh, this is like painful. Like, mm. get you know, get Brad Pitt to read this or someone. Oh, someone sorry. Someone no. who <laughs> someone who knows who's had some experience like, you know, it's voice acting. You know, yeah. um, there's yeah. all, if, if you've ever seen the, the tabletop series, uh, the Will Wheaton show, it's like on YouTube and stuff. And, uh-huh. and, and Will Wheaton's one of those guys where he was famous for being you know, Wesley Crusher on Next Generation Star Trek. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then, like, didn't do anything else. But he's still, like, he's an actor. He's just, like, a voice actor. He just, like, reads reads books for audiobooks, and he does, like, TV commercials and radio hey. announcements and things like that. Do you know who does the voice of Velma on Scooby-Doo? No, who? Natalie from The Facts of Life. Oh, really? Yeah, do you remember wow. her? Remember yeah, that? I totally do. But yeah, that's so- what I'm talking about, people that... <laughs> You, you don't realize that they're actually actors because you never see their faces, but you hear their voices all the time. Yeah, totally. And like when you see a commercial, you're always like, is that who? Who is that? Anyway. <laughs> exactly. You're like, is that Bart Simpson? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know Bart Simpson's a lady? I guess everybody yeah. knows that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm late yeah. to the party there. Um, <laughs> all right. And then um, I was looking at this interview. I remember. Like you said, pickle buckets, and I was like, ah. And then I remember, did oh. you work at Frankfurter, or you worked at some triangle? What was this? Explain the. Remember that? Didn't you work um, at like a tri- an A frame something? Oh, okay. So yeah, when I was, when I was in Illinois, I lived in an A frame that was basically, um, so Peoria, wait, Illinois. Wait, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. When what? you were, didn't you work in fast food, like a hot dog place? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, the A frame hot dog place. Yeah, that was when I was in college. That was like. 95, 94. Yeah. Did you, what did was, you do? Did you have to wear a hat? <laughs> yes. Yes. It said dog on it. It was not even a full hat either. It was like a, a one of those visors where it's like just the headband and the visor. So oh. it actually doesn't go over the top of your head. And it's and it was a blue cap or blue hat that probably cost like $1.35 or something each. And then it, it had it was dog, dog on, on it, it. Okay. on the front. But it was, well... In California, they're really popular. They're called um, Wiener Schnitzel. Right. And they're basically these big red A frame places. A lot of them have the drive through that goes right through the middle of the A frame. Oh. And their specialty is hot dogs. Right. So, so you know, like Sonic, like, you know, Sonic is like everywhere out here now. Like, yeah. people love Sonic. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like that, that sort of thing. So, yeah, we had, uh, that's how I paid my way through college. Was Dog on it a ripoff though of Wiener Schnitzel? Yeah, it totally was because the guy who opened it, like, had had been like a, a manager for years for Wiener Schnitzel, and his whole thing was he wanted to start his own his own restaurant, but without paying the um, the fees that you have to pay for opening a franchise. Oh, right. So, yeah. like, say, like, if you like Subway, like, you go and you're like, well, I'm tired of being a Subway branch, I'm going to open my own place and it's going to be just like Subway. And I call it Link Light like, Rail. <laughs> right, exactly. And that That's was the exactly best I could come it up so with. It was the same menu and everything. He even got the chili from the same vendor, but he just changed the name basically so he didn't have to pay uh, royalties. That's the word. Pay royalties. Well, of course, he did go out of business after like four years. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, he had no advertising or whatever, and people will see Dog on it, and they're like, "What is that? Is that supposed to be like a winter schnitzel?" Or is it? Did it have the drive through the center, and was it yes, a triangle? It did. Yeah, it, did? it was actually an old winter schnitzel building that had gone out of business. <laughs> Wait, so how did you? If somebody's driving through the middle, is it a pretty big building? Like, no, oh. no, it was a really small building. So there's just like a tiny. You're okay, just so in a tiny long kind of hallway. Thing. I'm... For the article or the book or whatever, I got to get you a picture of it, <gasps> so you can actually put a picture of the place. Yes. Where is it? Albany. Uh, it? Corvallis. It was actually in Corvallis. <gasps> oh, that's. It was it near the the Kmart, the Walmart, the Buy Mart. Yeah, the Buy Mart. Right next door to the Buy Mart. Yep. And then what happened was last time I went by there, actually they had sold it and it was bought by like a 
a guy that made it into a Chinese restaurant and yeah. actually uh -huh. actually built over the drive through and turned that into like a storage room or something. It can't still be there. Uh, no, but I can find pictures of it online um, or at least find pictures of ones that look similar to it. Because I've done some research recently into Wiener Schnitzel's. So. <laughs> Why? That's how I feel nostalgic, you know. And was it like, but it had to have been working in like a long hallway, no? Because how? Yeah, no, it was, I mean, it was, well, we didn't have in indoor dining. There was, a, there was on one side was a walk-up window uh -huh. and a tiny little foyer mm -hmm. that was like, basically people would just come in, look at the menu, oh. order stuff, take it. And they could, there, we had, we had tables that were outside that they could sit at, but a lot of times people would just order something and then take it out and eat it on the, you know, walking down the street or whatever. When's the last um, time you ate a hot dog? Oh, the I'm... last time, the last time I ate a hot dog? Yeah. Um, like Thursday. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I eat hot dogs all the time. You so. do? Yeah, I love them. You do? Are you yep. afraid of what's in them? No? Like, uh, you have no well, fear ones, of eating, like, ones, whatever? Well, here's the thing. The ones I, I I have at work now, and here's where it comes all for, full circle, because I manage a, a hospital cafeteria, is the hot dogs we, we use are all beef. Okay. But, and but part, what does that really mean, all beef? Is it, it, it like, no all pork. meat? Oh. Well, no, it means it's all it's all beef. It, it's basically all like cow? halal. Like, Muslims can eat it and not have to worry about ingesting pork. Because we had that happen, I remember once, where we had this group of guys come through in a car and they ordered some hot dogs and they drove off. And then like two minutes later, they drove out back in. They said, hey, by the way, is there any pork in these hot dogs? And we're like, yep. It's like <laughs> beef, beef, turkey, and pork. And they're like, yeah, we can't eat these. Oh. We're not supposed to eat pork. So yeah, all beef hot dogs, then you don't have that problem. But again, Juice. does beef yeah. mean well, like is it? cow or does it mean like... Uh, <sighs> Like, didn't you, you never dated any Jewish guys, I guess, did you? So I tried. Yeah, no, it's like Nathan's hot dogs. They're all all beef, which means there's no pork in them so that Jewish people can eat them and not be breaking any laws. But you're not nailing down the core question, which is, is all beef mean all cow? Or could it mean <laughs> all horse, all dog? Like, wh beef, what does beef mean? I'm really tempted to, like, make fun of you and really draw this out at you're like, what is beef? Here. Is beef just mean cow? Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. so, you know, do you know what venison is? Yes, it's deer. Right. Okay, good. Do you know what oh, pork uh, is pig? So beef right. is cow. Poultry That's... is chicken. Yeah, well, yeah. Poultry is usually chicken and, and I can see your confusion because when you say poultry, you can be talking about chicken or like yeah. turkey. Yes. But yeah, when you say beef, you're not collectively talking about meat oh see that's um, what i get i guess meat is the collective word yes meat and is what you're talking about poultry fish you know everything. who came up with the word beef they should have just said cow like this is 100 percent cow <laughs> well, no it totally makes sense because it goes back to like the the beef industry um you know trying to advertise and have like national marketing campaigns they, they don't want you to like have a have a vision in your head where it's like you right. know, McDonald's commercial, it opens up and it shows a field and there's a there's this beautiful cow like just hanging out and chewing on some cud. And then this guy comes up with a sledgehammer and hits it over the head and then it cuts it up into little tiny pieces. And but we chicken. eat chicken McNuggets, like chicken McNuggets. They could have beef McNuggets. Yeah. Well, I don't think Ew. people get as weirded out about that, though. The I know, but chicken breast, like what is yeah. more gross than yeah. that? The Actually, idea of cutting the, off the boobs most, of a chicken. The most awkward thing I find myself ever doing when I'm when I'm serving customers in the cafeteria, mm -hmm. and we have chicken on the line, mm -hmm. you know, like fried chicken or something, and and you know people come up and it's like breast or leg. <laughs> yeah, I always feel like such a pervert when I when I offer that that option. Mm. But All yeah, right. beef is beef is only cow. Beef is only cow. I'm yeah. So got when you say all beef. People don't have to worry about having pork in it. Yep. I'm I got it now. I'm all set. Pork cool. is pig. Yep. Beef beef is cow. But and yeah, a lot of hot dogs, especially the hot dogs I served when I was in college, were basically, you know, all the pieces of the meats that you know what that couldn't be really used for anything else. I you guess, just find it up and then yeah. put it smash it all into a, a link and then Ugh. just overcook the crap out of it. <laughs> 
and then squirt a bunch of hot dog uh, mustard all over it and relish and sauerkraut. And then it's so drenched with other flavors that you like, hmm, you know. Yeah. Did you Especially ever have hot dogs cheese? being such a great thing where they're pre-cooked usually too and they're just frozen. Yeah. And you can just basically thaw them out and eat them raw. Oh, God. <laughs> Actually, the only time in my adult life when I really wanted hot dogs was when I was pregnant with my daughter. I was like... I wanted hot dogs all the time, and yep. oh, now I just think it's gross. Although, yep. oh. when I'm drunk, I'll have one with cream cheese. Did you ever have one with cream cheese? No, but I got to try that now. Oh, I it's did, so good. I did do it a while back where, what was it? I did jalapenos and, Ooh. Um, oh, I can't remember what else. I don't I even need the hot dog at that point. I'll just take no. the bun and the jalapenos and the cream cheese and the oh, sauerkraut yeah, yeah. and... Remember that no, sauerkraut the, kraut suit you? I can't even. You the, know what I'm yeah, saying. the hot dog is really just a delivery system for condiments. Right. But wait, what kind of. You used to make sauerkraut soup, and I yes. loved it. Oh, yeah. Wait, what was that? That was when I was really getting into like my Polish heritage, and I was like, um, borscht. That's what it is. Oh, that's what it's called? I'm oh pretty God. sure, I, and I don't know if that's the Polish word for it or the Czech word for it, but yeah, I remember when I was really like reading all the Kafka. Yeah. And I was really talking about like how I was going to move to to Prague and everything. Um, yeah, borscht. It's where I think it's beet juice and basically cabbage, sauerkraut um, and no meat because it's all just basically peasant peasant stew. Yeah, I like, loved uh, it. I could eat yeah. it all the time. You used to make it. That was like my favorite thing to come over. If I smelled that sauerkraut smell, I'd be like, <laughs> oh, it's here. It's here. And that then was, I tried to make it myself, and I don't think I could. Ex I oh yeah, work. I have to make that because I. I wonder. I wonder if my wife would like that. Yeah. Um, we should. So this is supposed to be a podcast about jobs. Wait, oh, I just. Ahead. She just overheard me. I think, and I just heard her say, <laughs> "She's like, I don't like borscht." <laughs> She's like, I specifically know what that is, and yes. don't try to put your Polish heritage on me. <laughs> oh, well, uh, you, yeah. Well, if we ever see each other in person again, we can sort of make some kind of effort. I'm sure there's some hipster restaurant in Portland that has a. Uh, yeah, I'm the sure. Menu. Yeah, because I think I, that's all Portland is now is hipster restaurants. Yes, I think I haven't so, been there in years. And well, my my yeah. sister sent me a picture where she was shopping on like Northeast Alberta street. And I was like, Oh my God, it's where are all the black people? Like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like just... the place totally looks different. Well, isn't that downtown square, that downtown square is probably still the same, like full of hippies. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. It's all the outlying neighborhoods because it's, it, it's gone. Well, it's just one of those things where people from all over the rest of the country move there. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, property rates skyrocket. Yeah, and then you know, the, the whole gentrification thing, and all like the the poor people, the poor people and the black people have to move somewhere else. Yeah, and then you just yeah. have a bunch of hipsters and coffee shops and Targets and Urban Outfitters everywhere. Which is uh, where you can pick up my book at Urban Outfitters. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Uh, we're working yeah, but on Powell's it. bookstore is still there. I, but yeah. yeah, see, that's the whole thing, because I remember Powell's Bookstore, when I first moved to Portland in the 90s, was like this really kind of funky place where of it was course. like, it smelled weird, Has and every and room stuff. was like different, Yeah, and then the last time I went to it, it was like a shopping center. It was, no, it was is it different? Um, it's probably still the same in parts, right? Like yeah. kind of old creaky rooms and like yeah, smells the new a little part bit. Was, yeah, the newer part was definitely, you know, fancier and nice and stuff, but yeah, but but yeah, because I remember the first time I went to uh, to Portland when I was in high school, and we went to the skating rink. We went to Lloyd Center Mall mm -hmm. and went to the skating rink, and I remember that was the big thing. Was like, yeah, that's the skating rink where Tanya Harding practiced. <gasps> that's right. So, yeah, because that was like right after the Olympics and the whole Tanya Harding yeah. scandal. So yeah, uh, most famous person to come out of Portland. Uh, <laughs> Well, now it's Portlandia, though. They've oh, usurped, like, Carrie Brown, Bronstein, yeah, Brownstein, yeah. how do you say it? Yeah, we saw her in a TV show recently. There's this TV show. Portlandia? That, <laughs> no, of course that. But, no, there's a new one where it is um, the transparent. It's got the, the older guy from Arrested Development. Yeah, 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 Jeffrey and, Tambor. Yeah, 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 where he's uh, he, he comes out of the closet as a – as a transsexual, basically, and then all the kids are freaking out. Is Carrie Brownstein in that? Or yeah, are you she's saying a, it's Portland? 
No, 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 no. She's in it. No, it's oh, not. Okay. It's set in like San Diego or some bullshit California city like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's always Hank from Hank. Larry Sanders to me. I don't. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Hey. Okay. Wait. So this is supposed to be a job. So, uh, f- so far we have. You were a janitor at this naturopathic place in Portland. You worked at Dog It. You work now in a hospital cafeteria, which is amazing, and I want to talk about. And then, but because you're getting all nostalgic with the borscht and everything, um, I wanted to talk for a few minutes about Evergreen. I think we can call it Evergreen since it doesn't exist anymore, right? Sure. I do have to say that I found I found it. The natu- National University of Natural Medicine is still in Portland <gasps> and it's still on off of Corbett. Oh. It's still in that same building. I'm looking at pictures of it. Do you think it's photogenic? Like if we take your picture in front of it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it, totally. It's like a three story brick building with lots of those tall, narrow windows. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, either you're gonna come out here or we're gonna come out there, so we'll figure it out. But um so Evergreen, can you tell me what you did at Evergreen? This was sort of, you were living in Corvallis, Oregon, in the most awesome mobile home that was your dad's. Yeah, And, and yeah. driving a Subaru Brat, and you worked yeah. in the shipping department at Evergreen Technologies in 1994, 6, 6, Yeah, seven? like it's 96, 97, yeah. And so... Yeah, I yeah. moved to Portland right about the end of 97, I think, 98. Okay. So what was Evergreen like? It was a budding technology company in a tiny college yes, town. Yes, it was. So I can like just say all the scathing thing. I, yeah, my first job there actually was they had me go into this back room where they had a, a sandblasting unit set up and like a like kind of like a lab set up where you where you like look in a glass box and then you put your hands through the gloves and mm. you manip- manip- manipulate things in the glass box. So it was for sandblasting. So they had like the sandblaster inside the box and then they had like a vacuum and everything. So the sandblasting would create lots of sand in the box, but then the vacuum would suck it out and you could reuse the, the sand. And it what wouldn't were you blasting? Like, go in your face. Oh, I was ba- blasting AMD um, chips. Processors. I was actually, yeah. yeah, the processors, the CPUs. I was blasting the AMD off of, off of the, uh, the surface of the chip so that they could stamp the Evergreen logo on top of it. <gasps> I had no idea. <laughs> so is that yeah. legal? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I didn't ask any questions. Oh my god! They just took me in the room and said, "Okay, here's your job now." Um, until we tell you otherwise, take these chips and make sure all the AMD is blasted off them. Had you ever used a sand blaster before? No, no, and it took me a while to pick up on it too, because <laughs> I remember I it was really cold because I think I started that job in the winter time too, so I'd. Like fin, I get cold, and I p- put everything together and take it back to like QA, and uh, I can't remember the guy's name that that I work for. I think it was like Tony or something. It was the guy oh. that had the affair with the other, the other receptionist. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know if we ever talked about that, but there was a whole. Th- yeah. Well, I, I remember I the one receptionist was- having an affair. Yeah, with multiple people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. And, and he would be like, no, 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 I can still see the faint outline of the AMD and do it, do it good enough. So I got better as I as I did it. And then eventually um, they promoted me to, to the shipping and, and receiving department. And then when my boss left that department, like after three months, then they made me the shipping re- uh, shipping manager. So and do you remember Eldon? Yes, he was the he was the RMA guy who had to read. Yeah, because the crazy thing about that was like at the end of every month, the the main CEO guy would come out and give us this like pep talk, and he'd be like, "We got to ship a million dollars worth of product out the door before the end of the month to make our financial numbers look good." Blah blah blah. blah. And it'd be like, "Well, we don't have time to test all of those chips for all of that product." He's like, "Don't worry about it. Just send it out the door. Just put it in boxes and pack it and and take care of our backlog and just send it out." And then two weeks later, poor Eldon would just like the, you know, a dump truck would just back up to the <laughs> RMA and just dump out all of these. Returns. You know, because we'd ship all this stuff to like GBW and then they would sell it and then it would get returned because it didn't work. And then they'd oh. ship it back to us and then he'd be stuck with having to open every box and test every product. And then, 
Oh my repack. god. Yeah. And he was Elden I specifically remember was in the warehouse in a room with no windows and one door. And yeah. so there were boxes floor to ceiling stacked and his job was just all day to process returns in a yep. windowless room. Yep. And he was actually a pretty good guy too. Oh, he was so nice. I remember yep. him being so nice. He was, yeah. Um, <laughs> but Oh my God! You remain. Yeah, why could, would there be? Why would there be windows in a warehouse? That just. That's a good point. I worked in a lot of warehouses, and most of them don't have windows. They, the only place that there's windows is if there's a little section where there's an office. Because the yeah, office. No, you're right. Windows. Well, and I just have to say one other thing, which is that okay. So we just have to explain to people who aren't us. The companies tell me what the company did. What what was their deal? Oh, they did uh, like CPU upgrades. So you basically take your two eighty six computer. And you buy like a 386 with a little widget, you know, attached to the to the 386 CPU, and you'd plug it into your 286, and then magically upgrade your computer to a 386 or a 486 or even a 586, um, yes. which most people of us of under a certain age probably don't even know what what any of that means. But a Pentium is a 586. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was a big thing because that was uh, the Pentium inside. That was the whole. The, was it Intel that was in Portland? They had their big manufacturing plant out there, and and then that like, yeah, yeah. I think it went away. I, I still have ads something. from there. I should. Well, it was sad because when I was in Portland, like right around 2000, their big push was like, we're gonna make Portland like a hot spot for like Tech. microcircuitry, like mm. technology and and industry and manufacturing, and they built all these big like manufacturing plants that were like equipped to deal with like, you know, clean room systems because you don't want like dust particles and stuff flying around when you're, you're making tiny uh, circuit mm -hmm. boards. Mm -hmm. And then like the market totally went to China and a lot of those places never even got used. Yeah. And I think, I think they're still kind of suffering from that. You know, I don't, I, I wonder if they still have buildings. I remember cleaning, you know, 15 years ago that are still like vacant. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's churches in them or something now, you know, or it's like a, like, or a hot dog place. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I just remember Beaverton is just like, the, was a sad place with all these big, these big manufacturing plants that are, were like brand new, but just sat there for years vacant because the, the, the uh, industry like relocated to China. Yeah. So, but but we got a guy, we got a president elect who's going to change all that and bring all. The okay, la 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 la. <laughs> um, um, I do rem I do want to say too that like so we worked at Evergreen together. That's how we met each other. And when you first met me, you thought I was like uptight secretary person, which is legit, I guess. Um, and then yeah, I didn't realize what a brilliant right you know, comedic mind you possess because yeah. I just remember walking in and you were just answering, going like, "Hi, thank you for calling for Evergreen Technologies. Please hold." Hi, thanks for calling Evergreen yeah. Technologies. Please hold. Or how may I direct your call? Yeah, that was that was, that all was you said. what yeah. sucked is that I had to say like three full sentences every time I answered the phone. And between because we were on the West Coast and we didn't open till noon East Coast time, <laughs> right, people right. were super pissed by the time we you know, it's lunchtime. Yeah. They've been trying all morning. And so between nine and ten AM I took I remember I put little tick marks one time and I took probably 75 calls in those 60 minutes. And I had to say every single time, like, thank you for calling Evergreen Technologies. This is Suzanne. How may I direct your call? And Suzanne is a hard word to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. and then and then I just have to, well, I think I probably told this story before, but, and you, I don't know, I wonder if you remember this. You probably do. But so people, nine out of every 10 people were calling to say that their motherboard was smoking or the chip right. didn't work or like, right. what am I yeah. supposed to do? I'm supposed to type some command line options in, it's not working. So I would try to transfer them to tech support and there were like five people back there. And so after the first five calls, I just had an hour of hell taking down people's numbers or just, you know, and I could beep back to tech support and it would just, open a phone on the wall back there and I would go, can anyone take a call? Can anyone take a call? And it would just be <laughs> vacant noise. So then one day some guy called, did I tell you this story? No, to tell it again. It sounds like a good work story. Yeah. Well, some guy 
called and he's like, you know, I've been down. I'm a small businessman. This is my only computer or something. Uh, I tried this processor. I can't get the computer's just down. I really, really need to talk to someone. I'm like, okay, no problem. Put him on hold. Can anyone take the call? Can anyone take the call? Nothing. So I write his number down. I say, I swear I'll have someone call you back. I went back and <laughs> I shouldn't say his name, but you remember the guy named Bernie? Oh, yeah. 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 I remember Bernie. So I give Bernie the number. I'm like, you must call this guy. And he's on the phone. He just waves me away. Whatever. I give him, please call this guy. Next day, the guy calls back. Like, he was so patient. He waited a full day. Please, please, no one call. No one called you back? No, no one called me back. So I write down the phone number again. You know, please, can someone take this call? No one, no one, no one. Then, like, I, I take his number down. I apologize. Hang up. Then, like, later that afternoon, still, he calls back again. Or maybe it was the next day, but it had been forever. And he called yeah. back. And he's like, you know, please, I I'm dying here, you know? <laughs> Not literally, but whatever. So I, I go... Are you serious? Like, no one called you back. So I rip my headset off. I march back to tech support. I told you this. Anyway, I yeah, marched back. Yeah, I remember this. Yeah. Song. And I, I said to Bernie, like, hey, uh, there's a guy on the phone. You need to get off the phone and talk to him right now. And he had, uh, Bernie was wearing a hat and a headset. And it was like a baseball hat. And he was kind of waving me away and, like, not making eye contact and putting the brim of his hat so I couldn't see him. And then, uh, I just screamed at him. <laughs> I, I screamed at him. I wish I had a dick. You could suck it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I <laughs> left and went back to the front desk and calmed down. And then I thought, well, I'm going to get fired. And then I went back there and Bernie said, oh, I didn't even hear you say it. And then the guy next to him said, like that guy who basically ended up stealing stuff. <laughs> Right. He right. said, oh, I heard you and so did the person I was on the phone with. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and then we all just laughed it off and then nobody talked about it again. And I think maybe Bernie called the guy back. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? So you didn't actually stand there and wait for him to call it. Because that was no. that's the only. I was going to say that that was pretty good customer service on your part, except for the fact that you didn't actually. Right. Get him on the call. Yeah. Right. Right. But was there like a manager or supervisor of that department? I think I'm going to say a name, too. I think it was Laura. Does that sound right? Was uh, she... Maybe. Yeah, that's probably why she didn't work there much longer. Well, because <laughs> she was not very memorable. Do you but remember yeah, her I... or no, Laura? Well, it just seems interesting that you didn't like go to a go to like the, the, the manager of the department. Oh, you... there was no such. I mean, it was like yeah, yeah, think... it was all kids. We were all this yeah. young, like well, yeah. 22 year olds trying to run. A there company. was really no there was really no management there because because uh, the main guy was always going out water skiing and stuff. <laughs> and then at the end of the month, he'd come in and be like, you know, slam his fist down on the on the table and be like, we got to get serious about this. We got to ship out a million dollars of product by the end of the month. It was then, one month was. We're going out of business. We have a list of 10 or 20 people who are going to get laid off. We've, right. we've made the list. It's just a matter of executing on it at the end of the month. And then right. the next month would be like, we're going public. Sign your IPO forms or whatever. <laughs> right. And after like months right. and months of that and the steely Dan and the farting, like <laughs> I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, uh, the one thing about that job is that's the thing that got me off my ass and got me to move to Portland and <laughs> try to like. It was just do the daily punishment of that place. Well, because no, I mean, like working like working at, at the hot dog place was one thing, but I was like going to college and stuff. And then like, you know, I quit school and I went to to work full time. And I was like, this is amazing because like I'm not paying tuition. So I actually like have a paycheck with money in in the bank because yeah. you know if there's something left over i'm not buying like four hundred dollars worth of books every every three months and then uh and then i was going drinking like every friday night with co-workers and stuff but then it was like all those weird affairs were happening and i was like hanging out with people on friday nights and then like seeing them on monday and just being like do you remember when you did that thing that was like really <laughs> inappropriate really yeah and then it'd be like, dude, don't remind me. Yeah, I just, <laughs> and then it was just like, what am I doing? I'm hanging out with like a, a, a bunch of people that I'm working with at a company that's probably not going to last that long. And they're all kind of like, just none of them, nobody has any self-respect or like, 
Yeah, it was. What's the word I'm thinking of? Dysfunctional. Yeah. It was just weird. Oh, it totally was. It was almost like Arrested Development is a good because people were just like, no matter what age the people were who were working there, they were all acting like high schoolers. Yeah, yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. So yeah, when I so I finally just said I'm like I'm putting in my two week notice. I'm I'm moving to moving to Portland, getting a and that's when I got the janitor job. Yeah. Because okay. I was like, I'll take anything. It doesn't matter. Like, I just want something that's not here. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. So then you went to Portland. You were a janitor. What happened after Portland? Or when did you leave Portland? Uh, so, yeah, I left Portland. And, like, basically, I kept doing the janitor thing for, for years. I pretty much the I, – I want to say I worked for the same company. But during the time I worked for them, like, they changed names, like, three times. Kept getting bought out by bigger – um, bigger companies, and were but you I just, was like, you were cleaning places all over Portland, or what? Yeah, was- yeah, yeah. Well, at one, basically, after I was at the college for like a year, I, you know, my boss came to me and said, "So here's the thing: like, you're 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 smart enough, and you're reliable. You show up for work on time. Like, your your talents are being wasted just cleaning this building. Like, we want you to drive a van and deal with emergencies and 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 fire people and stuff like that." Oh God! So, Have so you yeah. Had to so fire that, people? Um, no, 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 no. I never had to fire people directly. I would always just escort people to HR. Oh so God! HR would fire people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there was a lot of times where I'd have to like show up at a building because the weird thing would would be was that the way the operation worked is we had several hundred accounts and several hundred employees. And the way, and I would do like train new employees and stuff. So, like, say I'd I'd meet an employee at our warehouse and say, "Okay, follow me, and I'm going to take you to the building that you're going to clean, and then show them how to get in the building, show them any specifics about like, you know, uh, alarm codes or whatever, show them where the mop closet is, and then be like, "Okay, so this is your building to take care of. You're going to spend like eight hours here every night. You got to show up by like nine o'clock." and work eight hours and clean the building and then go home, make sure it's locked up. And then of course, you know, people would, you know, go, okay, yeah, everything's good. And then like a week later, the client would call the account manager and be like, yeah, so your person is like not showing up and cleaning the building or they're like showing up drunk or they're napping in the, in the, in the teacher's lounge or all kinds (laughs) of, actually the best one was when we got a call uh, so a good example of this is, you know, I, I would come to work at like at like 7.30 every morning, I think. So I walk into the office and uh, and my boss is there and he's like, he, he looks up at me. He's like, Aaron, we got to go right now to the uh, the library. I think it was the Lake Oswego Library or something. He's like, he's like, I just got a call from a librarian. She said she walked into the, into the uh, librarian's lounge and our janitor was lying on the couch with his clothes off and a <gasps> bunch of empty beer cans all over the place. <laughs> so we had to like basically r- drive out there, like wake the guy up, remove him from the building and then like clean up the mess that he had made. So yeah, oh. of course he was, he was fired. So, was he but, naked yeah. or just sort of half dressed? Uh, he still had his pants on. He just took his shirt off. Well, you know, you gotta sleep. <laughs> oh my God. So that's the kind of thing I, that's kind of a little snippet of stuff I do. Um, <laughs> and he didn't he was okay when you're like listen buddy you gotta go he's like oh yeah yeah I got drunk yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> right, right it happened again <laughs> <laughs> oh I guess it's not that's not something to laugh at <laughs> well sad. I mean it was you know, again like we were paying you know basically a minimum wage to people that were in t- pretty much unsupervised and it was kind of like okay here's the keys to this building like don't burn it down <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah okay, and um. <laughs> so yeah, so anyway, I, so I did that for like ten years, um, that kind of thing, and then, um, they were doing, the basically the company had been bought out by a much bigger company, and they were doing stuff all over the country, and at one point my boss was like, yeah, I can tell you're getting bored of this place and everything, so let's do something different. I'm gonna. You know, they're asking for supervisors to go out to Caterpillar out in Illinois. So we're going to ship you out there for two weeks and you're going to help do a transition um, for this new contract and stuff. So I went out to Illinois 
And then they were talking about like they didn't have an operations manager, blah, blah, blah. And I said they couldn't they couldn't find anybody to hire because it wasn't the biggest community. And basically, you know, it's one of those places where everybody gets recycled through different jobs and all the people that are good move on to other things. And all the people that aren't just end up being managers at different, you know, fast food places and get fired after six months. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) So anyway. So I'm like, well, I'd be interested in, you know, I don't have a family or anything. I'd be up for moving out here. And they're like, really? So then they uh, <laughs> they basically paid to have my all my shit sent out to Illinois, which was funny because that was as a as a side project I had recently picked up to kind of alleviate the, the soulless boredom of my life in Portland. Um, I started like hanging out and interning I, I like interning it's makes it sound fancy but it was basically hanging out at the typewriter repair shop and learning how to restore old typewriters so i had discovered that the goodwill uh bins in south portland they were, would sell typewriters for five dollars a piece like no questions asked and i'd just go in there and sometimes i'd walk out with like a shopping cart full of typewriters and then i'd take them home and either use them for parts or try to fix them up or whatever so I must have had like 30 typewriters and they pack, packed them all up and had movers come and pack them all up and ship them out to, to Illinois. And then that's when I got the little A-frame out there that I lived in. Wait, what did you do a, with all the typewriters? Well, they went into storage. Oh, my God. Which, and where are they now? A, well, mostly in the garage. But a lot, a lot of them got rid of uh, or gone. I got rid of a lot of them. Is your but wife shouting but, in the background? But, well, the like, funny side story to this is... Mm-hmm. When I got, I met my beautiful and amazing, intelligent wife, um, and we decided to get married and move to Virginia. So um, she didn't know about my typewriter hoard because it was all in a in a storage, <laughs> storage. unit, right? Uh-huh. So we what we what I had what had happened is since most of my stuff was already in storage anyway, I'd lived in that A frame for like a year. So I basically just like gave my notice and moved in with her into her apartment with my cat and you know my clothes and shit like that and then when we moved it was kind of like we packed up her apartment and then i'm like okay now i'm gonna take she's like wow the truck is like still half empty oh god (laughs) and i'm like okay i'm gonna take it to my storage unit and fill it up with all the stuff i have in the storage unit. so not until we actually got to virginia and i opened up the back and she's like oh my god what are all those boxes (laughs) oh my god yeah they're all typewriters and you still have them you should sell them uh, or whatever. Can you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine what the typewriter, what <laughs> the, <laughs> the typewriter market, resale market is like right now? Like, go on eBay and look up. You know, unless you're unless you're having some kind of rare collectible item from a century ago. You know, it. it well, my brother-in-law, bless his heart, sent me for like a like a wedding present or graduation present or whatever. He actually sent me this old like. 1920s vintage underwood typewriter that weighed like 45 pounds wow and he bought it for like four bucks but it cost him like 80 bucks to ship it (laughs) i'm sure that's what i was gonna say they're so heavy if you sell them online the shipping cost is gonna kill you exactly oh well i still have the one you gave me well good isn't that the one i'm trying to think because there was a kick i was going into where i was gifting typewriters to friends of mine based on typewriters that were used by famous authors. So I know I bought one that that was the same make and model that Faulkner used that I gave to, I think I gave that to Sarah. Wow. And then the one I gave to you. <laughs> Mine was used by um, <laughs> Walt Disney. <laughs> or you got to, like somebody, I'm trying to think of some goofball writer. Norm yeah, McDonald. I don't remember. I don't remember. No, it have- had, a, it was, it, well, it came in a box it's it's self-contained in a little suitcase yeah it's, it was a portable uh, what, what they called portable typewriter yeah it's and it had carried around in like a little brief, briefcase totally totally and then set it up on a desk i bring the it out yeah. these portables is when you type it slowly migrates across the desk where the desktops don't move because they weigh 45 pounds ah i bring it out so for that, my daughter once in a while and she's just like what yeah. is that it's amazing yeah it's like a it's like a laptop from like 50 years ago <laughs> exactly it's a super old laptop. Actually, I went when I was in San Francisco recently, and there's like a Stanley Kubrick exhibit, and uh, that guy is fucked up. But anyway, he had um, they had the typewriter from The Shining there, the one, and it oh, had a cool. yeah, it had yeah. a piece of paper in it that said, you know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, like over and over again. 
Right, right. So that was kind of cool. But then all the other stuff, I was like, I, I, I was there for like 15, 20 minutes. And then I was just like, this guy's a sick fuck. Like, it's just like eyes wide shut. And like, although he did, um, what's that movie about how I learned to love the bomb? Um, Dr. Strangelove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which, again, that's a good one. But then, like, somebody had... That was there a was, pretty twisted movie, though, too, yeah. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It had, like, a fan letter that was, like, all almost pornographic. And then he wrote back and was like, you understand me completely when you're in town. Let's get coffee or whatever. I'm like, oh, God, this is gross. But, I mean, it was interesting. I guess I'm just a prude. I don't know. <laughs> like the, And they had the script from Eyes Wide Shut. And it was just like, let's do this thing. And I was just like, oh, my God. I think it's just like this, like, he basically thought Nicole Kidman was hot and was like, how can I see her naked for as long as possible? Oh, I know. I'll write a really perverted script. And like, anyway, what do I know? Yeah, that could be. That they could be. <laughs> oh. Anyway, uh, I guess, let's see. We've been talking for quite a while. I was going to ask you really quickly about role playing, but I bet that's not a quick conversation. Um, but yeah, okay, wait. Most people don't even know what role playing really is outside of the context of like bedroom <gasps> stuff. No, God, D and D. That's <laughs> what I always think of is just D and D and you and Dave. But um, wait, so you, but you were... me and Dave playing D and D, not me and Dave. <laughs> right in the bedroom. <laughs> well, maybe you could combo that sometime. Um, sure. Okay. Yeah, oh. so we'll have to do a part two. <laughs> so you can talk about role playing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's my big. That's kind of my big passion is tabletop gaming now. So I actually do a lot of stuff with. Um, uh, I don't want to say, I do. I try to do a lot of promotion of tabletop gaming mm -hmm. uh, in family friendly environments. And like one of the things we're doing uh, an event at the library after Christmas where we're gonna set up. Um, uh, miniature gaming for people to come in and try out and we do a thing you know like there's a group that does chess club for kids after school it like that kind of stuff yeah and they trust like, you I, with their I, children I, well i'm kind of convinced that you know in an age of like everything being connected online and and computer gaming and stuff like like gaming kind of satisfies this this natural need that that humans seem to have to sit around together and tell stories yeah and you know back in the viking days or whatever like people sit around and like recite epic poems and drink beer and and now like we don't do that so much we have tv but the problem with tv is that it's one-sided One like there's no yeah. participation in it but with tabletop gaming what you do is you get like so like last night I went to a party with my wife and there was nine of us and we were playing this silly game. But it was thing was like nine of us all sitting around a table, you know, interacting and telling stories. And we're all part of a social, you know, yeah. experience that is entirely created within that social group and just much more satisfying than if we had just sat there and watched a movie together. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, well, maybe I think. Yeah, tabletop gaming is kind of like becoming a big thing now, and it's like new games are coming out all the time, and like Gen Con, like 60,000 plus people go to Gen Con now every year, and it's just, it's turned into a, it's turned into a thing. So it's still not as big as the computer gaming thing, but I think you'll, at some point people will realize how soulless and vapid computer gaming is and <laughs> go back to, you know, tabletop. So, yeah. anyway. All right, well, I, we talked for a whole hour. Yeah, but I also, on that side note, I also think that one day people are going to get tired of, like, computers and go back to using typewriters and sending letters in the mail, but I, I don't so. think that's going to happen. I know. <laughs> I love I'm actually, writing letters. Yeah, and sending thank you cards. Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe I'll send you a thank you for talking to me for an hour. All right, cool. <laughs> I that don't was, have your address. No, I, you have to send me your address. Well, dude, I always remember how excited I would get to get like like personal letters in the mail and I would check mail every day and I would write letters to like my grandma, my cousin, like everybody I could think of with the hope that like at some point somebody would write me back. Totally. So I and, still have letters that I wrote to some guy I had a crush on when I was 14 and he actually wrote back to me, but he sent me pictures of him with his shirt off. <laughs> but he's smoking hot, so it's okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Anyway, but yeah, like the excitement of getting those in the mail. Oh, my God. Amazing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My I, ears I'll... are getting sore. What? What? 
I'll have to send you pictures of like the college and stuff, and I'll find pictures of. Uh, oh yeah. The doggone it place and all that stuff. <gasps> That'd be amazing. Doggone it. Yeah, Can you spell doggone like it for me really quick? A D O G G O N I T. Oh, so it was one word. Yep. It wasn't like dashes. No, it's like. Yeah. Like when you're watching a movie that was like made in the 40s and the guy like hits his thumb with the yeah. hammer and instead and instead of saying like oh fucking shit he says oh dog on it like we gotta bring that back i guess dog on it oh my god all right i gotta go okay talk to you later <laughs> thank bye. you so much sure we'll okay. talk more later okay bye, bye.